iGlaucoma presents a video series with editorially independent content supported with advertising. Is a target eye pressure really needed for every glaucoma patient? What are some strategies for setting a target IOP? What are certain things you don't want to do when setting a target pressure? Answers to these questions and access to a free, simple, step-by-step -step guide on setting target eye pressures coming up next in this new video. Hello, and welcome to the Eye Glaucoma YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Constance Okeke, creator of Minx and Meds University, where we talk about the new, the old, the current, and pipeline medications that are used for treating glaucoma patients, as well as different medical management strategies for active implementation. So first up, are target pressures really needed for every glaucoma patient? Well, I believe that a target eye pressure should be set for all patients, in addition to monitoring the structure and function of the optic nerve and managing the quality of life for the patient. Setting a target IOP guides the clinician on how much pressure lowering is needed and then how intense the treatment regimen should be in order to achieve this goal. Do we need to pursue an eye drop or should we consider a laser or surgical approach or a combination of these? Another benefit of setting a target eye pressure is helping the clinicians assess adherence with the patient and the effectiveness of the treatment strategy. If the target is set at 14 millimeters of mercury, but the patient presents with an IOP of 18 millimeters of mercury, the clinician can investigate if there are issues surrounding the medication regimen, such as irritation to the eye, trouble finding the right time to take the drop, difficulty keeping up with the cost of the drop, stretching the medications, etc. Alternatively, being on target with the IOP, but finding that there are visual field, OCT, or optic nerve changes, this can alert the clinician to address either compliance issues or potentially other factors contributing to the progression of the glaucoma, such as sleep apnea or nocturnal hypoperfusion from systemic or topical beta blockers. Next, what are some strategies for setting a target eye pressure? Well, there are multiple strategies to determine a target eye pressure. One method is to subtract a percentage from the baseline IOP. For example, in the OATS study, the target IOP was set as 20% reduction from baseline or IOP less than 24 millimeters of mercury, whichever was lower. Another method is to set an absolute number for every patient with a similar glaucomatous damage as a target and then adjust it depending on the progression of the disease. A third way is to set target eye pressures based on the stage of the glaucoma. The more advanced the glaucoma is, the lower the target should be. Typically, a 30% reduction for mild glaucoma, 40% for moderate, and 50% for severe glaucoma. I like to use a method that is somewhat of a combination of these. I explain my method in more detail in a free guide. It's the simple approach I use when setting target IOPs, along with some resources on other strategies who I've appreciated. Make sure you grab my five steps to setting a target pressure step-by-step -step guide in the link in the description box below. Now, what are certain things you don't want to do when setting a target pressure? In my opinion, one thing you don't want to do is set a single number for a target pressure. I believe you should set a target range for the IOP because it fluctuates on a daily and diurnal basis. There can also be measurement error from the operator or device that can be part of the equation. Taking these potential inconsistencies into account, along with monitoring the stability of structure and function of the optic nerve, can prevent unnecessary changes that reduce the quality of life or int introduce unnecessary risks. You may document a single number, but keep the idea of a range in mind when decision making. Also, something you don't want to do with target IOPs is simply to forget to set it or document it. There are times when I want to gain more testing before setting the target IOP, and then I set the target in my mind when I get that information, but forget to document it in the chart. We need to always remember to write it in the chart, as it is impossible to remember for every patient and can create room for error in our monitoring efforts, especially when the records are shared. Also, the clinician does not want to forget to change the target when appropriate. 
If glaucoma does damage progresses despite the IOP being at target, clinicians need to investigate why. Is it that the patient cannot comply and we need to consider laser or surgical options to maintain the target consistently in between office visits? If the regimen is being adhered to, then one needs to understand that maybe the glaucoma is still progressing despite achieving the target and then the target IOP needs to be reset lower. Okay, did you follow with me the whole way? Awesome. What was your favorite takeaway that you think you might implement in the next week? Tell me in the comments below. And hey, don't forget to grab my five steps to setting a target pressure step-by-step -step guide with a link in the description box below. If you like what you watched, give me a thumbs up and share the MIGS and Meds University video with a colleague that you think can benefit from the video or guide. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss the next video. Thanks for watching the iGlaucoma YouTube channel, a place where glaucoma innovation is made easy for eye care professionals.